I'm Peter Block here in Chicago at ACC 2016 for On the Scene. Uh, you're seeing an unusual situation. On my left is a cardiac surgeon and I'm an interventional cardiologist, but in fact, uh, we're worried about the same issues and that is how to deal with the mitral valve. Uh, Antonio Nema is from Italy and he has just reported on an interesting trial concerning approximation of the papillary muscles in patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy versus a ring to repair the mitral regurgitation. So Antonio, tell me about your trial to start with. Hi Peter, thank you. In our trial we randomized 96 people, one to one, to papillary muscle surgery, which was a, an approximation combined with an, an undersizing procedure plus cabbage, versus uh, undersizing mitral repair associated with cabbage. Our primary endpoint was the left ventricular and diastolic diameter over a five years follow-up. And uh, the results of our trial were a better modeling in the PMA group, in the group who had uh, papillary muscle surgery compared to the other one. Also, this group had a better recovery of the left ventricular function together with the diameters. Okay, so let me interrupt and ask a question, Antonio. What you're really doing is pulling the papillary muscles back together again, closer to approximate them and get them underneath the mitral valve so that there is better coarctation. How long does this last, do you think? Uh, I think that this procedure uh, will last about five, six years. But uh, our data supports the hypothesis that the interpapillary distance was similar now from the, pre the early postoperative values. So in five, six years, we observed no uh, enlargement of the interpapillary distance in people who had papillary muscle surgery. On the other hand, the other group experienced the progressive left ventricular enlargement, and this one is not seen in the uh, subvalvular surgery. Yeah, perhaps no surprise, because you're really pulling the anterior and posterior portions of the ventricle mm -hmm. together a little bit. So tell me, of the two groups, what percentage needed mitral valve replacement or further mitral valve surgery? During the follow-up, about 13-14% uh, in the uh, undersizing uh, group, uh, whereas about 3-4% in the so in the approximation group. So you really had a significant improvement in patients that had the approximation. So tell me, Antonio, going forward, this is an interesting technology. What do you see for cardiac surgeons and for patients? What are you going to tell them now going forward? I think that patients, uh, now it's too difficult to, to distinguish between which is the most appropriate procedure. But future trial will help us in describing this, uh, the importance of papillary muscle surgery. And maybe cardiac surgeons should improve their techniques to perform papillary muscle approximation in the near future. Okay, so we have a first step into looking at how perhaps to avoid early bad surgery and maybe have better surgery coming out of approximation. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you.